everyone. We're going to take a look today at uh, the ideas of peacemaking, uh, peacekeeping, and peace building in global politics and, and what distinguishes them. So you'll notice that I've, I've used some color here to try to distinguish between them, um, and we'll talk about the color coding after. But first, let's talk about peacekeeping and what that means in global politics. Peacekeeping basically means that you have someone, I'm going to draw a little stick figure here, that is keeping two opposing sides apart from each other. So think of a schoolyard fight um, and how those usually end. You usually have a vice principal that comes running um, and it's usually this guy and he tries to keep them apart so that they're not fighting anymore. And in terms of global politics, that's the same thing that we have in peacekeeping here. You have a third party that intervenes and just makes sure that people are not fighting anymore, that uh, the guns are put down. So that's basically what peacekeeping is. And so I've used the red color here to, to show that that's sort of in the heat of violence. Um, and that is just trying to make the violence stop. If we go to peacemaking, uh, it goes to a different level. So again, using the schoolyard analogy, think of uh, if you've ever been in a schoolyard fight, hopefully not, that after you have been broken apart, you usually go to the principal or vice principal's office and uh, Let's call him the VP here. And there's a discussion between all three of you about how you can make a truce and stop the fighting, so an agreement. In global politics terms, it could take the form of a truce, treaty, accord, for example. Okay, And in global politics also, um, this person here would probably be an official diplomat. So we'll put that in there as well. So. Orange color is okay. It's not. It's not the heat of of uh, violent conflict. You've got them to put down their weapons. Now you are just um, trying to hammer out an agreement that they will both hold to. Peace building is uh, you go the extra mile. And so again, this may take third party involvement. Most often it does, and you're having those two former enemies that were at each other's throats and were killing each other or hurting each other. You have them coming to an agreement and also uh, recognizing each other's differences, accepting them, and trying to work together to build a new nation. So you'd have what we call harmony. Now, if we want to bring realism and liberalism into this, the realists would say that these two here are about as far as you can go. And liberalists would say that these two would be the first steps but this is the ultimate ideal, is that long-lasting, sustainable peace. 